With YouTube attacking alternative media, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon for just a dollar per month. Link below. And man, did I love Crank. And I loved Crank 2 uh, just as much as the first one. It was it was even crazier. It was wilder. And they addressed the one complaint I had with Crank. At the end of Crank, when Chev Chelios jumps out of the helicopter, he pulls out his phone and he calls Amy Smart. And he says, like, you know, he does that, like, whole sappy speech or whatever. And then on my way to go see uh, Crank 2, my buddy and I were talking about it. And he goes, you ever notice how, like, like that was a really weird scene in the movie because he's falling she wouldn't be able to hear anything that he says, like period. She would never be able to hear him. So what the hell, right? And then in Crank 2, uh, when they reunite, she, she was like, I thought you were dead. He's like, I called you. And then it does a smash cut to the answering machine and it's nothing but wind. And I thought that was a great throwback and a great uh, moment of self-awareness for the franchise and also satirizing itself and making fun of itself, which is one of the reasons why it completely solidified it as being um, just an amazing film. Now, it says here, forget superhero or universal monster cinematic universes. How about a crank cinematic universe uh, based around Jason Statham's unstoppable character, Chev Chelios? That's what crank co-director Brian Taylor wants, and it's not a bad idea, and I, I completely agree with uh, with the article here. Uh, will we ever get a Crank 3? Uh, Brian Tyler sure thinks so, but he's not s s settling for a simple sequel. He wants more like a Crank cinematic universe. In Crank and Crank High Voltage, Jason Statham's Chev Chelios found himself in all sorts of bonkers situations. In the first film, he was poisoned and had to keep running around, injecting himself with adrenaline to survive. And in the sequel, his heart was stolen and replaced with an indestructible robot heart. The movies were wild, inspired by devote. <laughs> And devoted cult following that has fans clamoring for a third entry. That's very true. Uh, Nedeveen Taylor, the directors, I thought they did great on Crank and Crank 2. I love their work on Gamer. Um, the, I never saw the second Ghost Rider film. I just never got around to it, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, it's one of those things where you're like, yeah, man, like, uh, like I want to see him come back into this world. Now, uh, now, Brian Tyler did weigh in on Crank 3, jokingly saying that the prospects for Crank 3 would be much improved if the second movie had made more than $12 at the box office. Hey, man, my friend and I went and saw that opening day. We spent more than $12. I mean, combined. So... You got you got your money, but but there there wasn't anyone else in the theater when we went on opening day. So, but what he says here, my feeling about Crank Three is that Crank Three should be as exponentially more uh, fucked up than Crank Two, as Crank Two was Crank One. Obviously, there's been talk here and there, but I've never really felt that creatively it was fucked up enough to really do it because the studio will get in contact with us. What do you guys think about this? What do you guys think about that? And the scenarios are always very tame compared to what I think they should be. And yeah, I think he's got a point there. I honestly got to do. You've got a franchise that is so balls to the wall insane that uh, ultimately you want it to, uh, to to be way more crazy than it is. Like and push just push it out there to the point of complete insanity, which Crank 2 did in very many ways. Uh, but we've gone now, what, nine years almost since uh, since Crank 2. So maybe it's time to, like, give us that third entry. Um, but, uh, he, but then he went on to say that he really wants to see a crank cinematic universe saying, obviously there's a great movie there somewhere. I don't know if it's going to be Jason Statham in a wheelchair 40 years from now, but I think there should be a crank cinematic universe, not just one movie who knows there's nothing in the works right now, but you never know, uh, me and Mark, uh, are brothers for life. And I would agree with that entirely, but what, I mean, how would they do a crank cinematic universe? Right. If, if Chev Chelios is kind of this indestructible person, what would take it to that next level? Right. What would take it to that next place that would make it a, gr a grand scale that would create this cinematic universe? Right now, you could almost look at how they've done Cloverfield, maybe as an example of how to do this, where you've got Chev Chelios and then you've got an, another ancillary tale that uh that's out there that that's going to be somewhat tied to it maybe another kind of synthetic poison maybe another kind of robotic heart maybe this time it's a robotic dick or something and the only way to keep alive is you know you have to find ways to to to, to, to keep it erect or something i have no idea like it's a horrible idea that's a bad idea but what i'm trying to say is like how would they tell those kind of stories and how would they tie it back in together and honestly they kind of need to go to netflix Right. If the studio is talking to them about wanting to do this movie, you take it to Netflix. 
You go like, look, man, we made the first one for like five million bucks. We'll do this next one for like fucking five million bucks. And uh, Jason Satham's already on board, you know? Now, <laughs> uh, he does go on to talk about, uh, they, they went on to talk about Crank 3 back in 2015, right? Uh, nearly six years after Crank 2. And he says, we're definitely going to do solo films, but we, but we have an approved treatment for Crank 3. We're super excited about it. I know we've talked about it in the past. We've had lunch with Jason. We've had lunch with Lakeshore. Everybody wants to do it. It's just now about the stars aligning. Brian and I have a couple of things we'd really like to do as a team. And there are projects that really make sense that way. But also everybody thinks we're just one person. We're actually two guys with families and kids now. And we have things that we want to do solo. And we're very supportive of each other. But we want to do Crank 3. So... Yeah, if you think of like the, you think of um, Crank and Crank 2, and uh, I want to say also Jonah Hex, uh, Gamer, and uh, Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, it was always directed by Nedavine Taylor, right? Nedavine slash Taylor. People thought that they were one person. And that's two, two dudes. Uh, and ultimately, they work better together than I think they probably would apart. And so I'm hoping, I'm very much hoping that somewhere down the line, we actually get to see this kind of thing take uh, shape whether it is a reboot of the franchise uh in spawning off into a cinematic universe or we get crank three to kind of finalize it maybe the, the death they should call this crank three the death of chev chelios question mark and that should be the thing but people uh, want to see it there's clearly a cult following for this i got both movies on blu-ray uh like i said just from a filmmaker perspective i really really like uh, I, I really like how they did it. I like how they shot it, how visceral, how violent, how crazy they made it. And ultimately, uh, I want nothing more than to see the franchise continue. But at the same time, I just have to keep reminding people that Jason Statham ain't getting any younger.